This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff to get through today, so let's get right into it. Okay, on my left-hand side here, you can see the route that Motor Yacht Nord is currently taking. She's heading to Cape Town in South Africa, and you can see that she is currently heading to Singapore. She'll be going through the Malacca Straits in the next couple of days. So if you're in that area, keep an eye on her on marine traffic and you'll see her appear in the terrestrial uh, tracker soon. And one other thing as well, we were tracking Andromeda. She has been heading from Port Victoria in the Seychelles to Darwin in Australia. Yesterday at uh, 11.30 in the evening, uh, UTC time, she arrived in Darwin. Now, uh, the vessel left Port Victoria on the 20th of September and arrived in Darwin on the 22nd of October. So that's uh, one month and two days at sea. She traveled a distance of 4,000, this is approximate of course, because we don't know the exact route, but uh, 4,534 nautical miles or 8,400 kilometers. Uh, now, you might be asking, what did that cost? And this is what I was going back to saying that it's very unlikely for a yacht to make a trip like this unless the owner or somebody is going to use that vessel because it costs so much to make these trips, right? Well, Andromeda has a, a range of 12,000 nautical miles of 12 knots. Um, the vessel can take 370,000 liters of fuel. Um, and the way the, uh, the range has worked out is that after doing 12,000 miles, she would have approximately 10% of a fuel left in the tanks. So that's 333,000 liters of fuel. That would cost at $1.40 per liter, which is not the exact price. I couldn't get the exact price, but that's a, 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 an estimate of how much it costs per liter of marine fuel. It would cost $466,200 to fill the vessel. But remember, she has a range of 12,000 nautical miles. She traveled 4,534 nautical miles which is approximately 38% of the 12,000 nautical mile range. So uh, the cost to get that vessel down there would have been approximately 177,156 US dollars. So quite an expensive affair, right? All right, so we'll move on. Um, in a previous video, we talked about Alicia Usmanov's uh, properties in Turgensee in the Bavaria being uh, raided by the um, German police or the German version of the FBI um, that, and they found four what they believed could be Fabergé eggs in there. Well those Fabergé eggs were uh, examined by experts and it actually turns out that they were not real. So that was surprising to me. I figured somebody like uh, somebody who's worth 16 billion or whatever he's worth would not buy fake Fabergé eggs, but it turns out they were gifts that he was planning on giving to someone in Uzbekistan. And so uh, they're not worth the $100 million or so that we thought they might be. Having said that, they, even though they are not originals, they are apparently still worth five figures, so tens of thousands of dollars still. Well, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Anyway, we'll move on to the main story, and that is about a yacht. Uh, this is a sailing yacht in uh, Norway that's been arrested there called Firebird. Now, the reason why the vessel has been arrested is because of the owner, and his name is Andre Jakinen. Now, he was arrested in Norway because he's been flying a drone in around Svalbard and possibly in other locations in Norway. Now, since the 20th of February, 2022, Russian flights have been banned from Norwegian airspace, and this includes, you know, helicopters, aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles. Now, this is something weird going on in Norway right now with the Russians, because this is the fourth time in one week that somebody who is Russian has been arrested for flying a drone in Norway. Uh, and they've, they've, uh, they're suspected of flying them in areas and photographing classified areas of Norway. Now you will know there's been NATO exercises going on in Norway recently as well. So I don't know whether they're still going on, but there have been, there's been a lot of interest around Norway when it comes to Russians for some reason. Now his, his boat is a 27 meter yacht named Firebird and it's still in Norway and the crew have also been uh, detained. 
Um, the, and the yacht was also searched by authorities, most likely looking for potential footage of areas that they've been filming with this drone, right? Now, so who is Andrei Yakinin? Now, he is the son of Vladimir Yakinin, who is a close confidant of uh, President Putin. I believe he's ex-KGB, the, the father. He was also the uh, president of Russian Railways uh, in between 2005 and 2015. This is the father. Uh, the 14th, in 2014, sorry, the USA government issued sanctions against him, freezing all of his assets in the US. This was after the invasion of, of Crimea. So the ban on flights that we talked about includes all flights, like I said earlier, including drones operated by Russians. Now, uh, Mr. Yakinin has a British passport as well as a Russian passport, but that does not prevent him from being arrested because he's still got the Russian citizenship. The restricted area also includes the airspace over the Norwegian territorial waters. So the sea area from the Norwegian uh, shoreline out to 12 nautical miles. So Mr. Yakinen, who, like I said, owns dual citizenship, he's in, he's still, he's in prison. He's in pre-trial de pre detention for at least the next two weeks. So we'll bring you more on that when we get it. Uh, one other thing, a follow-up uh, on another story that we mentioned recently. It was about a vessel called Motiot Valerie, which was arrested in Barcelona in March. She's been there since March, and um, the vessel was arrested because it's owned or allegedly owned by Sergei Chemizov. Um, the vessel's actually registered uh, to his stepdaughter. Now, what we said in the last video is that the, the vessel had changed names from Valerie to Meridian A. Now, what was interesting about this name change is when we checked on the IMO database, the International Maritime Organization database, the name of the vessel is still Valerie. It hasn't, hasn't been updated. We also used a, another database that we use, which, which can be faster to be updated. And that was also saying the name is still Valerie. So I have a feeling because the owner of the vessel is the, the Russian chap, I think the vessel's name has been changed because it's, it's being held by the Spanish authorities. I think they've changed the name just to take the heat off that vessel. It has been changed on AIS, it is broadcasting Meridian A, but as far as the IMO database goes, it has not changed. Now, what's interesting about this is that the vessel has been moved recently from the MB92 shipyard where the vessel was being worked on when she was arrested. And it was moved to another area because MB92 wanted to use that facility for other yachts. Now, we mentioned in the previous video that the Spanish government and the French government were accepting payments from the owners of these vessels, the vessels that supposedly been arrested. They were accepting payments from them to continue to pay for the upkeep of the vessels, even though they weren't allowed to use them or, or, or sell them or move them or anywhere. However, Valerie's owner stopped making payments as soon as the vessel was arrested. So he hasn't made a single payment since. And that's why the vessel has been moved. They're not getting any money. The, the, the shipyard is not, has not had any payments since the vessel was arrested. Now, the, the arrest was challenged by the, by the company that, that formerly owns this vessel. The company is called um, Solberg Services Limited. Now they challenged the freezing and it's, it's incredible the, the reason that they challenged it. They argued to the Spanish authorities that they could, because they couldn't prove who owned the yacht, that they, they couldn't seize it right, or freeze it. And the Madrid court obviously rejected that. So they're basically saying, we've hidden the, the owner so well that you can't arrest it because you don't know who it is. So they have traced Solberg Services Limited back to the stepdaughter of Mr. Chemizov, as I mentioned earlier. I just wanted to mention uh, to check out our Patreon page. We now have a Patreon page. This is a way to support your favorite YouTubers uh, with a subscription. We, uh, we will never change the YouTube platform. Uh, we will always be posting our videos on here. But if you want to support the channel, if you want to see extra exclusive stuff that, we, that won't get put onto YouTube, then you can check that out on our Patreon page. We'll put a description, we'll put a link in the description below and we'll put one up here in the, in the corner as well. Um, I just wanted to say one last thing. Thank you, thank you very much to everybody who sends us photos and videos and information. 
I, I should mention this more often, but we could not do this without you. So I, I just wanted to say that we really appreciate everybody who sends stuff, even if we don't use what you send in, because we get so much stuff sent in that we can't always use all of it, and some of it might not be relevant, but we do appreciate it. And so keep it coming uh, when you can. The story about the Norwegian drone was actually sent in by a subscriber. So thanks very much for everyone who does that. Really appreciate it. All right, if you've got any information about any of the stories that we mentioned tonight, uh, or any other stories, please get in touch through the normal way. You can get us through the About page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram, on Facebook Messenger, and you can also get us on Threema. Be sure to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for future notifications. Okay, thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.